If you've been going out, checking out some of the best restaurants in our city, uh, you might have noticed pig ear on the menu. If you've had a sausage or a hot dog or head cheese, you've probably already had pig ear. So it's nothing to be afraid of. The preparation I'm going to talk about today is something you can actually do at home. And I'm going to use one of my absolute favorite culinary tools. You've seen it before. It's the pressure cooker. And the pressure cooker is an ideal tool for these because it really needs to break the cartilage down. These are quite tough and chewy. Uh, and they require hours and hours of cooking uh, conventionally. With a pressure cooker, an hour is all you need. So let's get started. Just add the ears without uh, any kind of butchery. All you need to do is make sure they're, they're clean. And of course, remember when using a pressure cooker that we don't want to overload it. We don't want to really fill the cooker more than about halfway for maximum efficiency and to, of course, be safe. And now for the liquid ingredients. Chinese light soy. Shaoxing wine, an absolute essential uh, in Chinese cooking. If you can't get Shaoxing wine, which is an aged rice uh, wine, if you can't find this, dry sherry makes a great substitute. And lastly, chicken stock. Now, if this were a traditional braise, we'd have a whole lot more liquid, but because we're using the pressure cooker, as we've talked about in the past, you don't need a whole lot of liquid. The liquid doesn't have to come anywhere near covering the top of your ingredients. So it might seem like just a very small amount of liquid relative to uh, what we're cooking, but that's gonna be totally okay since we're using the pressure cooker. And now for the aromatic ingredients, I'm gonna make a little pouch, a little satchel, so it helps uh, when, the, when the cooking's done, help us uh, be able to strain the liquid much easier. So I'm gonna start with an, a pot of star anise, uh, some fresh batons of uh, ginger, which I'm gonna add, just fresh cloves of garlic. And we're just gonna gather this up, and we're gonna get a little piece of butcher twine. Okay, secure, and in the pot. Brown onion, just scatter a little bit right over the top. Kosher salt, sprinkled right on top, and some white sugar. Now we're ready to cover. Lock the lid in place, and we're gonna go right to the stove. Okay, now that we got the ears on the heat, we want to bring the pressure inside the cooker up to 15 PSI at a fairly high heat. That really high boiling point, that elevated boiling point is what's going to help break down the pig ears and make them nice, soft and supple and, uh, instead of you know, so, uh, so tough. Um, so we're going to come back in an hour and check again. After the ears have spent an hour cooking at full power, 15 PSI, and letting the steam naturally vent uh, after the heat's been turned off completely, which is about 20 minutes time total, we should have this thing nice and cool and the ear should be ready to handle now. Okay, now that the ears have been cooked for an hour in the pressure cooker, they've uh, softened up quite a bit. In fact, they're kind of floppy, like ears are supposed to be. They've also drunk up a lot of that uh, cooking liquid and uh, it's acted like a marinade. So you have a lot of flavor from the Shaoxing wine and the light soy really kind of embedded into the pig ear now. Now we're ready to cut the ears into slightly smaller pieces so they fit nicely within our terrine mold. This is sort of like, as you can see, Chinese charcuterie is what I call it. We take our pieces of ear that we've cut into more manageable sized strips and we're just going to layer them in so that they're kind of even. Once we've got about two layers of ear, we're gonna go and use that liquid, that cooking liquid that I had reduced earlier. This liquid is full of the gelatin that's been broken down from the cooking process. And we're just gonna pour a little bit over to kind of cover that first couple layers of ear, okay? And we're gonna do this in steps, some ear, more liquid, and so on, until this thing is completely full. The cooking liquid, of course, will, once we get the terrine cold, will become the sort of gelatin binder for the whole thing. Now that we've got all the ear nice layered in there, I'm just gonna finish it off with a little bit more cooking liquid, just to sort of fill in the gaps. And remember, this is our gelatin binder, and also an important part of the flavor uh, impact of this terrain. Okay, now we get to wrap it, sort of like a present. We're gonna take this sort of excess 
on all the sides. Pull it all in. Like so. And apply just a little bit of pressure so that the liquid can really fill in all the, the gaps. And this will give you a nice, tightly formed terrine. Finally, you do want to give it a little tap. Just, again, maybe loosen some of those trapped air bubbles. And one more push. And I've constructed a little arts and crafts project. This is just a piece of cardboard wrapped in aluminum foil, which is going to serve as a lid, which I'm going to put right on top. It's obviously cut to the size of the terrine, which is nice and helpful. And while refrigerating, which should take a minimum of six hours overnight is best, you will need something uh, that serves as a weight to keep pressure on top of the terrine. Um, I, because I'm in the restaurant business, find these big cans of whatever, and we can just lay it on top. Um, you can use a big pot. Um, it can just be anything as long as it's uh, fairly heavy, and it just needs to sit the entire time refrigerated with that weight on top. It's been eight hours now. I'm actually really excited. I want to taste this. It should be nice and set firm right about now. Yes, it's quite firm, which means it's really lovely and easy to eat. Okay. Uh, that's gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. You can really see that the humble pig ear has really been transformed into something quite beautiful and it's quite delicious actually. One of the reactions I get when I show this uh, to people is they, they, they can't really believe that it uh, was once a pig ear uh, and, and you saw what that looked like before. And uh, now we're ready to slice. I like to cut mine a, a little, maybe like a, a quarter of an inch thick, gives the ear a little more uh, body and texture when you're eating it. I also love the pig ear terrine in a banh mi sandwich, in which case I would cut it a little bit thinner or use a deli slicer. 